Welcome to the Hockey Writer's Inc., the show where the writer is fresh off the presses and the ink is not dry. Relax, the keyboard is off and the press box is closed, but the mic is just getting warmed up. Join your host, Lance Green, the guardian of the blue paint turned writer, and your co-host, Ron Steele Flyers, as we bring you all the latest on the Philadelphia Flyers. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the next edition of the Hockey Writers, Inc. With your host, Lance Green. All right, guys, back again. Of course, Flyers Hockey is back. They are in the practice facility. They are getting tortured by their head coach. <laughs> and Flyers Hockey is back. That's all I got to say. Summer is over. Sucks to say goodbye to summer, but I'm I'm gonna welcome hockey in uh, again. I am ready. Oh yeah, that baby. Is for sure. Oh yeah, baby. Woo! Here we go. Here we go. Here we go. Oh my gosh! I can't believe it. I can't believe it. We're we're in training camp, or should we say uh, Torturella camp? Right. Uh, well, that's the name of the episode anyway. Episode number one seventy seven. Torturella camp has started for the Philadelphia Flyers. And Lance, we're excited about this, man. We we can't wait. We've been chomping at the bit, waiting for Flyers hockey, and now we got it. So let's dive right on in to the deep end of this. And let's start talking about that. How about that Tortorella camp? Uh, we've seen Tortorella come out and explain some things. We've seen players come out, right, and talk about a bunch of things. And I, I watched this... Uh, uh, one interview uh, with Tortorella, and 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 he was explaining about how the uh, do the training and everything, you know what I mean, and 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 the the reasons behind it. And this is what I wanted to ask you, Lance, about this whole Tortorella thing, you know what I mean? The skate test. It's all about. It's not. It's not necessarily about how you can handle things physically though it's how you can handle things up here right yeah it's it's definitely that has to do with the mental aspect too for sure um you know skating physicality of it all uh off all see off all summer of course he he definitely there is a factor of that he wants to see how guys have come into camp into shape or out of shape you know did you sit on the beach all summer long and drink beer on a nice <laughs> you know island getaway <laughs> or, you know, did you spend most of that summer in the in the rinks, back home, you know, working out, getting it ready? You're paid millions of dollars to do this job. You should be doing it during the off season and, and getting into shape before camp. You know, before camp, it'd be different when guys didn't get paid like this and had to go work another job back in the day uh, during the summer just to, you know, pay bills. But it's been quite some time since that those times, and you know these guys should definitely be, you know, in the rinks with special training and coaches and everything like that. But the other aspect, like Steele said, is the, the mental aspect of it. Uh, you know, Steele, I, I I've seen I've been in these types of practices before, but it was usually when we got into so many had so many penalty minutes and fighting majors and suspensions that the coach got kicked out for the next couple of games <laughs> and. He made a skate until we were taking breaks, uh, puking while the other set was still skating, and then we would get back on the line to to do that. Um, but that you know that was punishment, not trying to get us into uh, camp ready shape. And um, you know since Tortorello's been in there, this this mental aspect of it all, he's trying to whip them into shape mentally as well to get back and to see who can handle this torturous, um, you know, kind of camp or, 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 you know, at least first couple of days, the military does the same thing, right? The first couple of days are, are absolute hell to see if you can handle it mentally. And then he breaks you down just to build you back up. And that is what the flyers are doing here. Like they've, they've done the past, couple of years as Tortorello's been with them and it has shown 
to work, right? These guys generally, the first couple of games out the year, it, years past, they were always slow. They were always late out of the gate and had to get seven, ten games into the season before they really got going. But as you've seen with Tortorello's teams since he's been with the Flyers, they are ready to go right day the one gate. of the regular season and they take off while other teams are still kind of doing that and getting their act together. So I love it. Um, you know, these these younger guys are going to get a taste of what, hey, do you want to you want to be professional at this? You're yeah. going to have to work and hone your yeah. craft like you've never done that before. And uh, it, it's a reality check for some guys. Some guys, it, it can fuel to be like, man, if this is it, like, I'm all for it. Like, I love this. And then some guys just can't and they, they can't hang. And, you know, that's you're 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 separating them. Right. You're, you're seeing who the men and who are the boys still. And the boys generally get sent back to junior hockey. And that's usually how it works out. But I, I like what Tortorello said, because you touched on it as well. It's all about this. It's all about seeing if these guys can can do it up here. Look, when you get to a point where your body is starting to shut down, this is what needs to take over, okay? Yeah. And when, when you get into the third period of the game and there's still 10 minutes left and you think that you've expended everything that you got, you're out there for the next shift. And you better be giving it 110%, just like the coach expects you to. And I like how he's using ropes and – all kinds of other, you know, gadgets or whatever to, to kind of roll these guys into shape. But, hey, man, I like what you said, Lance. This is all about that mental fortitude, about how are you going to be when it's deep in games and you're down and you need to be out there, right? Who are the guys he can count on? That's who he finds out with these tests. Yeah, I mean, and the military and police and everything like that, they do it with, you know, sleep deprivation uh, for oh, some okay. days at a time. They won't they yep. won't let you sleep, but he can't do that. Right. He doesn't have one yeah, ice all day and all night. So he's he's trying to do that in other ways. And just, you know, like you said, when you're down and out and you don't think you have anything else left, you got to you got to be able to, you know, find it within and bring it out and, and you know, rise true. above that and. and get that next goal that, you know, you need to or whatever like that. So, you know, it, it's it's definitely interesting. And uh, you can't see too many NHL coaches taking it to this level. And, uh, you know, that's that's why John Tortorello has, you know, the the clout that he does and, uh, you know, everything that comes with it, Stanley Cup, you know, ring and, uh, you know, Jack Adams Award and everything else, because uh, he he thinks of all that. I was very skeptical about when he was hired initially and because of his past um, antics um, and everything else like that. But when you now we're in our third year now and we've seen the real Tortorella and mm -hmm. we've seen the maturity and, and we've seen him grow um, as far as that's concerned. But one of the things I think that I missed on my assessment of him was how much he cares about the players. Okay. And to a man, you can talk to almost every pro player that he's had, except for, you know, there's going to be a couple, not everybody's going to be, you know, peaches and cream and holding hands and singing, you know, Kumbaya. Right. But for the most part, Tortorella's doing those things to deflect, to keep the attention off of the team and to take care and, and to take care of his team through the media and and send his messages that way. So I have a, a, a much more um, uh, appreciation of, of Tortorella's style, I guess you could say. You know, well, for how you he's... know, uh, for, for for sure, for 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 one thing, though, he was right in a lot of ways. And you're seeing that now in a sense where you see the players that were frustrated with him who thought he was picking on them and Pierre Luc de uh, Dubois. How many teams has he be on, been on now? He's been traded multiple times after his run-ins because he is what Tortorello said. You know, uh, Patrick Line. How many teams has he been on now? The kid is amazingly talented, but he just doesn't 
put forth this kind of effort that we're talking to in practice and everything at practice. Uh, you know, he doesn't put forth that effort where he could be elite. He could be amazing, but he doesn't take that and and harness it and hone it. He just goes out there with the skill that he has and that's all he's going to give. You know what I mean? He's not going to, he's not going to work any harder. And those type players are exactly what Tortorello doesn't want. And he talked about, and everybody called him crazy for sitting these guys and different stuff like that. But look at them now. They're on their third, fourth team, not because they were chasing contracts, but necessarily, but because nobody wants to deal with them. So it's I mean, not you know, just Tim. Exactly. He was just the one that was brave enough to put it out there, you know, and call them out, you know. And why the heck not? We're paying how much money to go to all these games and us, the fans, and, you know, the, the teams themselves are spending how many millions of dollars on these players? It's not right. You know, if you're going to be at that level, you need to to treat yourself, uh, you know, like a professional and treat your job like you're a professional. And these guys aren't. So, you know, uh, good for Tortorello. I, I think he's learned a lot as a coach, you know, going through the years and, and learned when to do that and when not to, more or less, since he's been with the Flyers. And, uh, you know, how to tone that down and maybe not put it so much and use the media so much uh, like he did in the past to – to, you know, really hit home his point with some of these players, but maybe, you know, send it uh, other ways. Um, But it's, but it's widely effective. And, uh, you know, we saw that last season with, you know, sometimes Sean Couturier sitting down and, and uh, other people, you know, it, you're not safe. uh, Even if you're the captain, all right, he's still going to expect you to give your all out there. I mean, I'm, I'm going to tell you guys all this right now, okay? Mark my words, okay? There's going to come a time this season where Mitch Koff is going to be sitting in the press box, all right? Get sure. ready for that to happen, okay? The reason why I'm saying that is because this is a young kid coming over here. Doesn't quite get mm-hmm. it yet. Still learning, right? Until he learns what Tortorella is going to expect of him, there's going to be some clashing. There's going to be some butting of heads. He Mm -hmm. wants the kid to be the offensive juggernaut that he is. But you got to make the effort defensively. You got to show the coach that you're making the effort defensively. He struggled a little bit in the test, but he made it. Right? Mitchkoff did. Struggled a little bit, but he made it through. Right? So Mm -hmm. he's not going to be one of them quitter guys. You know what I'm saying? And, you know, yeah, I don't think he's a quitter. Yeah, for sure. Right. And see, that's why I think when we saw the first year that Tortorella came in here, he said in his first year, he said, we got rid of guys. He said, we got rid of really good guys. You know what I mean? Really good, talented cancer. players. There was cancer in that locker room. But you need to do that. You need to clean it out. And, and it's, it's like that whole thing that we talked about. When this whole thing first started, we said, look, we're going to go win championships. And most of y'all in this room ain't going to be here. So now we're past that point now where we've gotten, we weeded out all the stuff. Now we're starting to build to get to that point. You know what I mean? Where we can start being contenders. You know what I'm saying? They're putting out pretty much mostly the same team this year, Lance, with the exception of goaltending for the most part, because, well, obviously Carter Hart and now uh, uh, Fedotov is in. Right, so now we've got a little bit of a different tandem there in goal. But the only other player that's been added has been Mitch Koff. Everybody else is still the same. Oh, and we lost Nick Sealer, but um, well, you know, whatever, right? We yeah, Nick James Sealer's there. there uh, yeah, well, Nick Sealer's still there. He's still no, there, no, but um, um, Sean Walker, I mean. Yeah, Sean right. Walker. Sean Walker went, and uh, you know, they they let go a pretty. Pretty uh, decent winger um, as well, but, uh, you know, you gain Mitchkoff for that. And uh, that's right. The Flyers cleared cleared some people that were from the old regime that were just used 
to losing, I think, at this point. They were used to maybe getting in the playoffs, getting knocked out of the first round, and they were just okay with that every year. They didn't, you know, they weren't hungry. They didn't battle back uh, stronger, you know, because of that. They they just come accustomed to it. And, and at that point, you needed to, you know, rid yourself of those players, no matter how good, essentially, they were. Claude Giroux, Jacob Voracek. Um, and and bring in some guys that were hungry. And I, I think Mishkov, you mentioned Mishkov. I think he is hungry. He's young. He's He's been a professional in the KHL for the past couple of seasons. Um, but this is a whole new monster. This is the NHL. And um, this is the best league in the world where the best of the best come to play. And I think he is talented enough to play in it for sure. But Oh, yeah. It's going to be a hard test for, for Tortorello as well because this kid is – Probably the most talented person we've seen since Eric Lindros coming as a prospect to the flyer system. Um, okay, I would agree with that. Essentially, essentially, that's what the hype has lived up to. Now, you know, we've seen him that's play sad, in one. Man, that we haven't had anybody that one good game or so, Lindros. right? <laughs> well, I mean, with right? with much hype and everything like that right. coming from it, right? Um, right. So, you know, Jeff Carter was great. You know, Mike Richards, all those guys were great, but they, they didn't have the hype behind them uh, that this kid does. And the, and I think it's rightfully there. You know, it's been wrongly placed on certain players over the years because we haven't had that type player. But, but Mishkov is. So I think that John Tortorella needs to kind of take a step back off of him in a sense too because you need to let this kid be himself uh, because you've seen in camp – Tortorella was kind of uh, when Mishkov was trying the Michigan goal uh, and stuff in practice. And, you know, he looked up to Danny Briere and, and, and you know, he, Danny and, and the boys up top were just kind of laughing like this. This kid is that talented and you kind of need him to let him spread his wings a little bit because we haven't had that uh, type type of just pure talent that it is able to do those kind of things, especially in games. So you kind of need to let, let him alone a little bit, but I agree. You don't let him need to get away with totally not playing defense and everything else. And I, and I don't think he's that type of player. I mean, over the years, uh, his defense has gotten better, essentially an, an amazing plus player, but, uh, you know, he is young. He's still developing that skill. Um, I think it will come. I think he wants to be that type of player. Um, so I don't think it's going to be a problem necessarily. Um, one of the other young guys that really stood out to me here in camp so far and is Jet. In that first day, we're talking about that first day. Uh, you know, Jet Lachenko didn't seem to bother him one bit. Uh, they were skating for hours and hours and hours. And when other people are taking a knee, when other people are, you know, dragging themselves yeah, off the ice afterward. Jet Lachenko acted like it was absolutely nothing, right? Right. Uh, he was skating at at the speed he was skating at the first couple laps until the same that he was skating on, you know, the last drill of the day. And there's a reason why, you know, they drafted this kid, I guess. Of course, me, myself especially, I know uh, with who was left on the board – I wanted a, a certain player, but, you know, I, I still trust in Danny Briere here. You yeah. know, if Chuck Fletcher did something like that, I would have still been ranting and raving about it. But, you know, <laughs> I trust in Danny. I trust in the moves that he's making. And, and mm-hmm. Keith Jones as well. He's right in there yeah. in the mix, yeah. too. I trust that they're building this franchise for the future, for the better. And they saw something in the Luchenko that um, – you know, could essentially could essentially be a great player one day, and um, so I don't have any any reason to really, you know, question them. Even though, man, I I, I wanted a, a particular player that was still on the board, but we got Jet. He looks amazing. Yeah. Question is, how long does he stay in camp? Uh, because I, I essentially I think he's going to go back to juniors. Although with the center core being what it is. Uh, man, I would love to see this kid just stick around and play in the NHL this year, but I, I know it's probably not what's best for him uh, okay. going forward. They, 
they can keep him for 10 games. Right. Right. So they can keep him all through camp, all, all through preseason, um, and he can play 10 games. Okay. And then at, at that play point, they can make games. a decision. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? And quite frankly, I would do that. I would let him play those 10 games just to see so, what would be the worst thing that could possibly happen. Oh, my gosh, you get a center who could score and skate and make play. How dare we do that? Oh, my gosh. But yeah. that's kind of what I'm thinking. Maybe we just let – I mean, all right, well, so we pretty much know that Mitch Koff is going to be on the team mostly. Well, and we talked about – Luchenko. Well, what about Oliver Bonk? I mean, I think well, Oliver Bonk, he really impressed in the the rookie games back, and he's been really good out of the gates in camp so far. I mean, well, we're only two days in, but but but. Well, see, with with um, the the rookie camps, he was battling uh, a sickness, an illness. Uh, yeah. I think he had mono. I'm I'm not 100 percent sure, but he yeah. was battling something. He really couldn't participate fully, or he wasn't, you know, 100 percent healthy. Uh, so we're gonna have to see if that's still kind of lingering here. I mean, in the in the next couple of games um, with the with this, he did amazing last year coming out. He stayed um, for a long time in camp. Uh, one w- was one of the last ones cut to go back to juniors and we saw what he did last year uh i mean one one you know won, won the, the championship with the london yeah. knights and all that good yeah. stuff so i mean awesome kid um is is he ready to stay uh, i don't know uh he's 19 years old you know he he can probably essentially go back for a, another year with the knights uh I don't so, think that would be I don't think that would be advantageous for him. I think it would be better if he either went to to the Flyers or if they put him in the Phantoms. Do you know what I mean? Can they do that? Can can they put him down in the Phantoms? I I, I don't know or does he have does he have to go back? We we I you know. No, if, I mean if, he He's he's 19, so yeah, no, I I don't think he essentially um, could go to the Phantoms. I don't think they would really want him to, um, because there's a lot of depth down there anyway. Even if he could, okay. I mean, I was just asking. I I wasn't, and I was talking. I was I was actually I I misheard you. I was talking about Barky with the whole illness thing. But oh, um, no. Oliver Bonk, yeah, yeah, yeah no, Oliver Bonk, Bonk, you know, Bonk, uh, same thing. You know, had an amazing year with. Um, with with the knights now he is needed and essentially because like i said in my my last article that right hand shot defenseman is scary uh for a sense with with uh drysdale and uh risto you know both coming back from injuries and such like that you know but essentially Phantoms are loaded with defense a lot of those guys i think are going to be career ahlers in a sense they've been there's a lot of them that have been AHL players for a long time and just haven't cut the mustard to make the jump. Thus, we've had to go other places and draft people like Bonk as well. Um, but with that, I think they send him back to juniors for another year. I think he's going to have another amazing year. He's got 67 points in 60 games and was a plus 28 as a defenseman scoring over a point per game. Now, does... Does he have anything else to prove? No, I don't think so. But I think you'll see him come up like Cam York did at the end of this season. Okay, I got once, you. Once the Knights, once the Knights are, you know, out of it in the playoffs or finish their season, then he comes up for some games, and I think he'll essentially be a part next year okay, with I got the Flyers. You. Uh, I I don't I don't really see him going to the Phantoms. Uh, I I think. He's past that uh, essentially, um, and I, with the Flyers, he's not going to be playing top four minutes or anything like that right now. That's so, true. you know, they they got a good young core though, uh, for sure. You know, with Drysdale, with Cam York, Sandheim being the veteran now, 
Um, you right. know, he's played, <laughs> he's played quite some years. He doesn't seem like he's played that long, uh, but no. he's, he's, he came in young and he's, he's played, uh, a lot of seasons with the flyers already. And, and, um, you know, so that young core is, is going to be good on the back end for the flyers, but, uh, and, and I think he's there mentally as well. Um, man, I just, I just don't think that uh, there's a spot ready for him on the Flyers. If the, now, if the Flyers feel he's absolutely good enough and can and and Risto can prove he's healthy enough and they can find some sucker to take him, um, he's made a lot of strides with the Flyers uh, from his time in Buffalo, where he was a minus a hundred bazillion freaking you know horribly oh, defensively. Man. Oh my God, horrible <laughs> defensively, but. You know, he has made a lot of strides within, you know, the flyer system and uh, was even a plus player last year. Not not a huge plus player, but a plus player on a team that wasn't. Um, So. You know, who knows? We will see. Yeah. So we kind of covered all of the young guys there and we don't really necessarily seeing see any of the young guys with the exception of Jet potentially coming out of camp. And only for those first 10 games and then still going back. Yeah, I mean, Mishkov's I mean, going to make the see, team. You don't but, see yeah. Barkay. You don't see Bonk. You don't see any of them. Luchenko. You don't see any of them guys making it out of camp. I think the, the roster's too set, man. I think there's a lot of um, openness uh, as far as contracts-wise after next season, after this season. Um, there's, there's a lot of space, some, you know, for guys to, to prove themselves this camp and what they do this year in juniors or with the Phantoms to be able to make the team next year. Um, but I mean, signing Hathaway back early and all this stuff, those, those spots are dwindling as we speak. So they like their core, they like what they have. Um, and you know, guys are going to have to prove themselves. And and in saying that, I think we'll get to it with the goaltending situation here in a bit, uh, yeah. as far as proving themselves. So, <laughs> I mean, I, I would like to at least see Jet play the first nine games, and then go back. Yeah, because I want to see what he's got. I want to yeah, see. Yeah, uh, the Storm are not a great team. Um, no. You know, in that, and they they're in a tough league there with a lot of good teams. Which is and, why and I want Jet, to see Jet play those first couple games. Yeah, Jet Jet is a, you know I'm sure they'll talk to the Storm and and see what they say and and all that. But essentially, he's our prospect. We drafted him. Um, you know, if if the Flyers want to to keep him, they can. Um, they they could have him play in the NHL next year if he wanted if he was that great if they could have him stick around for a couple of games and then send him back. Um, but ultimately, I I think they're gonna do what's best for what they feel is best for Jet uh, to be able to start his season there. I don't know, uh, you know, their training camps are are going on as well and everything now, like that. Right so now, he's yeah. essentially missing them. And, yeah. you know, I don't know about their coaching situation and if they got a new coach this year or anything like that. All that stuff plays into, you know, you don't want Jet to go back if you're going to send him back and have a a slow start to the season because now he's not learning their systems or anything else that he's going to be playing in. You want him to go back and just hit the, hit the ice, you know, full yeah. blast. So, yeah. But they're going to do whatever's best for him, they feel, um, with that team situation. But, uh, man, I would love to see him play at least a couple of games and see what he actually has against NHL competition because he can obviously skate stride for stride with anybody besides maybe McDavid in the NHL. So, um, I mean, that's kind of where I'm at. That's kind of what I want to do. I want to see because we are we did see some classes with him playing with the golf storm, but – he the competition that he's playing against and everything else like that. I want to see him in an NHL setting and and we will excuse me. Um in two days well one day, um the twenty second is the first 
preseason game, and then the 23rd is the next one. So we're going to see what Jets going to be like. But now these are going to be, you know, this is training camp and preseason games, so not everybody's there. Not everybody's going to be playing for the opposition, blah, 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 blah. I would like to still see him stay and play for a couple games anyway. At least that's my thought. Yeah, I think there's going right. to be a lot of people cut after today. Um, you know, uh, it, it'd be the first. Yeah, essentially. Because tomorrow uh, is the first. Tomorrow is the first preseason game tomorrow. Right, but I, I think even even after today, really, um, some players that just aren't are definitely not ready or uh, will be cut. Essentially, probably today, and if not, you know, tomorrow for sure. Um, after the first preseason game, but uh, it's not like football where guys where you know you need so many you know people on offense, so many people on defense. That, you know, there's only there's only six spots on defense. You know that you you can well, put out. Well, they bring there, so. in they bring in about what fifty players. Yeah. Right. And and then they only keep twenty three on the roster, whereas the NFL brings in like anywhere from 90 to 116 players, and then they only keep 53. Right. You know what I mean? But then they have the practice squad and all that other stuff. But in the NHL, you can send guys down to the to the minors or, you know what I mean, other things. So, all right. Yeah. So speaking of which, now we got two preseason games coming up here back-to-back. Right. Okay? And quite frankly, you can't read anything into the preseason games. You really can't because you got – Goalies that don't play a full per- uh, a full game, they only play a period or an, and a half, depending on how they break it up, right? And then most of the time, your your big guns aren't even out there on the ice. But I think for the Flyers, they're going to have everybody involved for both of these preseason games. I mean, Konechny's going to be out there, Couturier is going to be out there. You know what I mean? You're you're going to see different things and different combinations. So. I, I'm liking how this preseason is being set up for the Flyers. I, I like how um, they're going to give everybody an opportunity to be out there on the ice. Okay, whereas in in years past when we had Giroux and Voracek and on them guys all kind of sat back and waited until the final preseason game or whatever. You know what I mean? Like I, I'm not about that, right? You, 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 it, it it was proven it didn't work, right? Uh, because right. they weren't ready to go at the start of the season. And and that's why I say I think a lot of guys will be cut early um, because mm-hmm. essentially Tortorella wants to get his guys that he knows is going to be on the team out well, there in the next couple yeah. of games even yeah. uh, to get some ice time. And, and this is what it's about. They know essentially who's on the cusp. They've been watching them all year and everything like that. They have all these... Flyers legends now uh, they seem to keep bringing in more they brought back you know Wayne Simmons of course recently as well which is amazing I I, I I love that they did that but (laughs) you know they have all these legends Patrick Sharp and everything coming back in John LeClaire helping out and you know they have those guys flying all over the place checking in with these guys all season long so they essentially know who's ready who's not and um, you know they want to get down to see some line combinations with some different players of those few that are, are, are knowing that they could essentially maybe make the team, uh, yeah. maybe not, you know, uh, depending. And they don't want some, you know, guy who's essentially just brought in and, and, you know, to fill a spot because they didn't have enough guys to bring in, uh, exactly. um, is good out there playing with Sean Couturier for two games. You know, they're, they, they, they want to get down to the people that they know pretty quickly um, because John Tortorella wants his guys in shape. He wants them on the ice. He wants them getting back familiar. He's going to try new looks uh, as far as long line combinations, you know, right now and, you know, splash in some of those younger kids like they did with uh, Barky last year and, and, and such. So I'm excited. I'm excited. You know, um, we're going to, we're going to have, um, actual real hockey here um, starting up tomorrow and we are less than a month away from actual puck drop for when games actually mean something yeah. so earlier this week Danny Breer had a presser and he came out and he talked about a lot of things 
But the thing that I want to focus in on is this whole goalie situation that's going on here with this Kozlov kid, or or uh, is that how you say his name? Who who cares at this point? I'm. I'm you kinda know, done with, all right. I'm kind of done with these kids. I I gotta tell you, um, I think a lot of these kids are entitled. Uh, they're told they're amazing and everything else, the Cutter Gauthier and all this stuff. And some, you see it all around the league, right? You see these prospects now coming in and saying, well, I'm not going to play for you. And I want to I want to head straight to the NHL. And, you know, that was kind of Cutter Gauthier's thing. We don't have a spot for you and you're going to have to prove yourself. Uh, and John Tortorella is <laughs> an old school coach. You know, I think, honestly, this is just my opinion, no insider information or anything like that on this topic, um, because I haven't even bothered to ask anybody. But uh, Kozlov came in essentially last year. He was playing in the KHL. He is a good young goaltender. He came. He was he was going to come to the Flyers, whatever like that. Then it came out that, you know, Fedotov was was coming over as well, right? And, you know, Fedotov has proven himself in the KHL. He's won championships. He's won best goaltender awards. He's a little bit older, um, you know, and he had his thing going on with the military service and all that other stuff where he couldn't have been over here earlier. And I think uh, Alexei kind of got in his feelings. And this is just my opinion, I'm telling you. But, um, it does kind of seem like that, though, doesn't it? You know, he came over. He thought he was going to be the guy to kind of jump on with the Flyers and get that shot. Hey, I'm a professional athlete over here. Uh, I'm not going to play. I don't want to play in the AHL. You know, he he reported last year, and I think he got his feelings hurt that he was kind of left riding on the bus and everything else instead of getting the the luxury treatment. But Tortorello <laughs> and Danny Briere, Keith Jones, they're old school guys. Um, I'm sorry, you're not. You weren't even the top goaltender drafted that year. So you know, why should we afford you all these luxuries? Why should we afford all these luxuries? Lance, they don't even need to be old school guys. Prove yourself. They just need to be realists. Okay, right. you can't expect that just because you're. It's like what we talked about with uh, Liam Kilfoyle when we interviewed him on on Prospect Watch, and he said it. He was the main man pots and pans when he was younger in his league. And when you go to the next level, guess what? You at the bottom of the totem pole and you have to work your way back up and prove yourself. Okay? Yeah. So that's where Kozlov is. He was good when he was there, but guess what? None of that stuff holds a candle over here because number one, it's a smaller ice, right? It's a whole different ball game now. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, you were professional over there, but but we don't know who you are here. So until you suit up and strap it in, how are we going to know? All we're going to do is go by what you say? Well, okay, that's all great, but put some tape out there for me. You know what I mean? Give me a reason to, to, to keep you around instead of giving me a reason to not want to keep you around. You know what I'm saying? I, I'm with you on that, Lance. I, I think this well, kid's got his feelings bent last year because Fedotov stepped all over him. Okay. It, it's just how it's just the nature of the beast. It doesn't matter what you do in life. There's always somebody out there that does it better, faster, and more efficient than you. And that's why well, look, as that's why the numbers as, here. Yeah. I mean, that's why as a, as an athlete, as a professional, as somebody that's out there in the force, you always have to be on your game, okay? Whether you're do you know whether you're a nurse, whether you're you know a, a bagging groceries or 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 building supercomputers, there's always somebody out there that can do it better, mm-hmm. okay? And faster and stronger and cheaper. You need to be the one that takes care of yourself and make sure that your skill sets are right. at that level, right? So. Well, yeah, let's Alexi look at numbers, though, that. Steele. Yeah, let's man, look at numbers. show me. Talk Alexi. To me. Alexi was over there last season in the KHL. He had a 
2.39 goals against average. He was ranked 20 bad. best, 22nd best in the league. You're not the number one guy even over there. All right. <laughs> Save percentage. Save percentage. Let's see what he's. He was ranked 43rd in the league over there in save percentage with a 907. You're not blowing me away with numbers even over there. Right. Okay. You weren't on the best team. I'll give you that. But wins. He won 22 games. He was ranked seventh. Well, he played 47 games. That's less than half of your win, half of your games. That's a, that's a lower uh, percentage than 500 win percentage. So are we even, he had four shutouts, uh, you know, Fedotov was right there or better in every single aspect that he was. Um, so, <clears throat> you know, it'd be different if this kid was, had, you know, 10 shutouts and, you know, 40 wins and, you know, some unbelievable save percentage and stuff like that. And he would have a leg to stand on. Right. But I mean, let's face it. You're not Eric Lindros. Like who said, Hey, I don't want to play for, you know, the Nordiques or whatever. Don't draft me. Um, You're Eric Lindros. You're whatever. At that point, he was the biggest thing since sliced bread. You're not that guy. And a lot of these kids today, feel so entitled because they are told since they were so young that they are the best thing since sliced bread that they come to the NHL and and they don't want to work for anything they just want to be given everything and I can't stand that in today's society um you know it, and it's not just hockey it's, it's today's society it's a yeah, lot of times um it's just, uh, it's not just where I come from, uh, you know, my generation, I guess. I, I guess that's people where we differ. Realize, people don't realize when they look at somebody like you who has put their time in, has done their dues, and see what you're, see the level that you're at. And, and kids want to come out of college or kids want to come out of school and want to be right away where a 45, 50 year old is. They want to be making over a hundred thousand dollars a year. They want to be driving the BMWs and the Mercedes. They want to live in the big giant mansions and all that other stuff. Well, see, here's the thing. If you want all that stuff, that's great. Okay. That's great. If you want that stuff, but you still have to work. You still have to put the jacket on and, and, and dig the hole. You still have to you know what I mean? You still have to wake up every morning and go to the job. You still you still have to do those things in order to get to that spot. You can't just come out of college or school and go, here you go, because because that ain't how it works. Same thing with athletes. Same thing with athletes. You look at all these kids that come out of college, and, and they're handed this massive contract. I think it's doing them a disservice. I, I am not a fan of what the NFL does. I love what the NHL does, where you're drafted, you sign um, an entry-level contract that's not even a million dollars for three years, right? You get three years to go finish out your junior or college or whatever you're doing. Then we see you back here. Now, Now, what do you got? Show me something, right? You still have to do the work. You still have to go in there and lace them up every day. You still have to practice. You still have to practice your shots. You still have to skate. You still have to do all these things. You can't just come out and go, here you go. And I think that's exactly what happened here with Alexi. He he did his thing in Russia, came over here, and was expected to be handed some things, and that's just not how it was. There was somebody out there that was a little better, a little faster, a little stronger, and now he's making six mil for two years, right? Just how it is, man. Sorry. It's the league of yeah. what can you do for me now? Yeah, you know, I, I don't know, man. I I just I'll get off the soapbox, but I mean, I can't I can't <laughs> see it's it's across all sports. <coughs> Who was that? Caleb Williams trying to come out with for the Bears, saying that he wants like a stake in the team's ownership or something. Who are you? You don't have a statue of yourself outside the stadium. What are you talking about? You're not Mario Lemieux, who put saved all his money and you know helped buy the team and. When they were in down times or whatever like that. Like, you know, the, that, those I are the guys that get okay. statues. <laughs> yeah, like, what the heck? I don't you know. haven't won a game yet. You haven't even won a game yet. I haven't suited you up for a game I mean? yet, and you want stake in the team. You know. Look, I mean, 
But here's the thing. It's unfortunate that some of these guys, kids, players fall through like that. It's unfortunate. Um, you know, I, I hope the Flyers can work something out. They can get something for him or send him somewhere where he can play and, and be successful. I wish him nothing but the best. I just don't think it's going to be with the Flyers organization. Okay? I just don't. Um, and it was one of those things where, okay, but they did draft – a couple of good goalies. They brought in another goalie as well, too, for, for training camp. So I, it, he never showed up. Kozlov never showed up for any of the training camps or nothing. So as far as I'm concerned, if you if you have a signed agreement to say that you're going to play and you don't show up, as far as I'm concerned, that's a breach of contract. Bye-bye. You don't want to be here. Bye-bye. Okay? Same thing with Gautier. You don't want to be here. Bye-bye. Get out. Okay? We don't want you, okay? And and you know what? <laughs> when you come to Philly, <laughs> ain't going to be a pretty game for you, buddy. <laughs> Especially if you don't want to be here. All right, enough about all that. We have a quick little announcement to make here before we get wrapping things up here. Um, first thing we want to do is talk about this. Lance, your latest article... Um, <laughs> I got to tell you, man, when I first saw the picture <laughs> article, <laughs> and I saw the title, I was like, wait a minute, wait, 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 wait a minute. <laughs> We're dumpster diving? Oh, uh, what? <laughs> so Lance's latest article uh, speaks about doing just that, um, going down on the cheap uh, to try to find some help here for the Flyers. And Lance, why don't you talk to us about the inspiration behind that article? Yeah, so... Um... The article, if you guys haven't read it, uh, it's potential dumpster diving treasures that could pay dividends for the Flyers if injuries occur. And that's just what I was thinking about when I was writing this training camp. Um, as you know, guys can come in to camp out of shape. They can come in coming back from injuries uh, yeah. that were extensive last season and had surgeries and stuff like that, which we have players doing. Um, or they could potentially get injured. You know, you're, you're going from maybe not doing as much to all of a sudden being thrown to the fire, like, like, you know, camp has been the first couple of days and you might tweak something, you might injure something. Um, and the flyers saw that, uh, hurt them at the end of the last season where they just traded Sean Walker away. And then Jamie Drysdale got hurt. Uh, again, because got he's hurt. been hurt ungodly amount of times uh, for as young as he's been. And then you had Risto go down with injury. And then the Flyers, who were in a, a playoff position for over 110 days, suddenly fell out of uh, that position and ended up not in the playoffs. Um, so, you know, it can go from bad or for, go from good to really bad really quick. And um, with that mindset, I kind of tried to name a couple of people that uh, are on just uh, PTOs or, or play out, player tryout deals uh, with different clubs uh, currently around the NHL that um, maybe if they don't get picked up by them, maybe the Flyers look to sign them on the cheap. Okay. Um, I, I get it. And it was a great article, Lance, because uh, you, you always have the, the angles covered. You know what I mean? And, and I suggest that you hop on over to steelflyers.com and check out Lance's latest article, uh, Dumpster Diving Treasures that the Flyers can find here in case anything were to happen. Uh, but go on over to steelflyers.com and check that out. Also, hey, we'd like to do a great shout out here to sportspider.com. Go check them out. Sports Spider, that's S P Y D E R dot com. Go check them out. They are putting out all of our stuff. They got all of Lance's articles. They got all the shows out there. Got to go check that out. Sports Spider dot com. Go check them out. They got all of our stuff going. Another little quick announcement that we have to make here, too, and that's this uh, we will be creating a new segment to the show, and I believe we've agreed on Phantom's Focus. Sure. As the title, right? So there you go. Um, next show, we will have a segment on the Phantoms Focus, okay? Uh, we would like to dedicate a special part of the show 
where we can talk about the Phantoms, talk about the games that they've done and how they've won and the stats and everything else like that, and give you a brief little update of what it's going to be like down there at Lehigh Valley this year. Um, I think it's going to be a good little uh, addition to this show, okay? And it'll also allow us to follow all of our prospects and all of the younger guys that are down in the Phantoms that could, could potentially come up to the Flyers. So there you go, folks. So go to sportspider.com and check out Phantoms Focus on our next show, right? Because that'll be our little new segment for the Phantoms. Lance, you got any uh, anything in the works? Uh, essentially, <laughs> I, I do. Uh, I've got some stuff on my handy-dandy notepads uh, that I have laying all over the place in case I <laughs> get uh, an idea. I hate randomly. to be your wife, man. Always yeah. picking up these notepads. What is this stuff? What, what is yeah, it? <laughs> all over the office. You know, right? Know, by the side of the bed, you know. You know? Some people, <laughs> I just wake up in the middle of the night and start jotting down some thoughts or something. Uh, who see, knows? But See that, folks? That's why he's the editor-in-chief of SteelFlyers.com, because this man is dedicated to what he does. He hones his craft very well. We call him the writer extraordinaire for these reasons. Go to steelflyers.com and check out all of Lance's latest articles, man, especially the Prospect Watch ones and, of course, the Philadelphia Flyers ones. So so you got some stuff in the works, just nothing situated just yet, right? Yeah, I got to see what which right. one I'm going to pursue next and, and you know, right. everything. So That sounds good. That sounds good. What I would like to try to do also uh, is, is between now and um, Puck Drop, I'd like to get uh, Lenny Red Coles on the show, okay? We've been talking about this, and I reached out to him the other day, um, and I have to give him some dates, uh, some times and stuff. Um, we're going to try to get Lenny on here because we have exclusive permission from the main man, Pots and Pans himself, Lenny Red Coles, who is the official photographer for the Flyers. We, use, we have permission from him to use his images on our shows and in our articles. So big props and thanks to Lenny Redcoles for all that. And we'd love to try to have him on the show. We've had him on twice. He always has great stories about all the great pictures that he takes. Um, I can't wait to talk to him about the stadium series and some other things that he's done over the last few years. Um, but can't wait to see uh, Lenny on the show as well. Um, and we might even try to reach back out and see if we can get Jimmy back on. Uh, he said he'd be more than happy to come out and do one for us. Um, here in September or whatever. So maybe we can reach out and get Jimmy back on. That would be another good one. But, man, I got to tell you what, folks. Um, big props and thanks to the Facebook groups. We appreciate you guys letting us put out all of our stuff out there. And big props and thanks to you, Lance, for all the things that you do here, man. Really appreciate it. All the articles that you write and all the great stuff you do, man. Really appreciate that. Well, what do you think, Lance? I think we got a good one here, buddy. Yeah, I'm ready to see some Flyers hockey, man. Um, I'm ready to see some of these kids line up with, um, you know, some of the Flyers' um, best players and and see what they can bring, man. I, I'm really excited to see uh, Barky, Bonk, Mishkov, Jet. Uh, we have some talent here and now within the system, and you know. God knows we got the, enough draft picks next year to really even double <laughs> what we have this year. So um, exactly, I, I hope that uh, Danny uses it wisely and um, that this upcoming draft, which me and Steele already have been talking to plenty of kids from this draft and, uh, man, are really impressed with the ones that we've talked to this, this year already, um, even before the season gets underway in a lot of these leagues, but uh, many more to come in that. So definitely tune in to Prospect Watch as well, as we're going to continue to bring on some of the best young talent in the game today and uh, see who we end up with in the future. Because, uh, you know, I think the Flyers are definitely building for the future. We're not trying to rush it, but, man, I wish they rushed one or two of these kids. I want to see them play. <laughs> oh, man. Um, so I, I think the Flyers, you know, I think the Flyers system is is gaining respect again. And, um, you know, it's not just a bunch of uh, over the hill hacks that, um, you know, we, we bring in at the deadline to try to push 
um, you know, into a playoff picture. We're, we're doing it right this time around. Danny Briere and, and Keith Jones are really doing it right and trying to build a team uh, through the draft and, you know, with youth. And, you know, have these players develop for the next 10 years and to be, you know, great flyers for the future uh, and instead of just trying to make one more year out of it, like, uh, you know, certain teams around the league are right now still, yeah. you know, yeah. we're trying to do it right. We're trying to build a franchise here again. <laughs> yeah. Uh, rebuild prove, Ed Sni- yeah. prove Ed Snyder proud, you know. Exactly. Exactly. Um, love what um, Halfrey has done since he's become – president um really love what danny Breer has done really can appreciate what keith jones has done looking forward to this year um and we'll see how things go but um thank you all for checking us out thank you lance for everything that you do man go over to to x and twitter and check out lance green 39 check him out over there you can check me out on x at ron steel flyers that would be steel flyers 52 um, also, be sure to check out sportsspider.com to check out all the latest articles and shows and everything out there uh, that, that they are putting out there of our stuff. And also, don't forget to go to steelflyers.com to get all the latest and greatest. I'm your co-host, Ron Steelflyers, and we will check you all on the next episode of Hockey Writers, Inc.